two gentlemen who call themselves the Art Guys have decided to make a performance out of sitting in a Denny's restaurant for 24 hours. To the untrained observer, these guys are just sitting around at Denny's passing the time. Passing the time for 24 hours. Jack and I work in a sort of a historical tendency that one might call um, conceptual performance art. We've always used ourselves as the material. Um, and a lot of the work is temporally based, meaning that it's time-based work, uh, that it exists for a moment in time and then it disappears. Whatever it is, it's ending at 9.28 this morning at the Denny's at the Katy Freeway and Washington Avenue. Let's hope they have enough money to pick up the check. For us who work in methodologies, never held that much interest to either one of us. Experimentation, um, trial and error, and all that sort of stuff has always been important to us. We think that humor, comedy, absurdity, laughter, are very important reactions to the world and very, very interesting, even more interesting than sadness or angst. What art does is, I think, is it shifts our notion of reality, of what we thought that reality was, that suddenly you see an artwork, and then it, it changes our sense of what that was. The reason that's so important is once you understand the world or you see the world differently, you change the world. Uh, and that's a mechanism for survival. For, the, for us as a species, once we understand the world, then we can deal with it. For me, it's very, very important. It's not a useless endeavor. So the, the stuff that is perceived as being absurd and, oh, there's the art guy doing what they're doing, um, we consider it seriously. And at the same time that it's, it's intellectual and serious, there's a lot of ineffable qualities to that. There's a lot of intuition that goes into it. That just means we don't know what we're doing. Fellow Americans, we're pleased to be here today to officially announce our co-candidacy for co-president of the United States. Any questions? We will now take questions. We came up with an idea of sponsorship and of fashion and of sort of advertising and all these things putting together. Well, if the role of an artist, which I think it is, is to investigate this reality, whatever that is, including culture and how people behave and what have you. Certainly, I think everyone would agree that some of the things that dominate contemporary culture, marketing, media, money, business. We try to keep it open-ended. There's, there's um, a reaction that we have against work that explains itself. If you have a piece of art that is issue-driven, that has a statement to make, it goes there and stops, which is fine. That, that there's room for all that in the art world. We enjoy the, um, the, the perpetual quality that art has, the open-endedness and the questioning that can continue rather than finalize. Bucket Feet was a project where we wore buckets uh, on our feet and then filled them up in downtown Houston at the various fountain. Reactions that we got were avoidance to engagement. And the funny thing about it is the, I, I think that truly the most honest and best engagement with that work were, came from what would be considered homeless people, people that were on the street already that perhaps thought of it as, wow, that's a great idea to stay, you know, stay cool. Like the Suits Project, people advertise, people engage in business, people market themselves or whatever, people get married. And uh, marrying a plant was a way to just think about what is this, what is this engagement when people get married? I can't imagine why that piece would be any more controversial than walking around downtown with buckets on your feet. <laughs>
We're not answering anything, we're just questioning. What is marriage? What is a, what's a tree? Could, is a tree awake? Is it not? What is our relationship to the world, the environment? If we can't take care of a tree, how can we take care of an environment? Blah, blah, blah. It's, it, for me, it's very rich, but it's embodied in this succinct little humble, it's just a tree. We've been working on a piece for the last few years that is so, sort of a summation of a lot of ideas and it's called Forever Yours. We're attempting to sell ourselves, our actual bodies, to a collector in the form of our cremated remains after we die. So far, no one has uh, taken up the, the piece and collected us. They're bronze urns, they're self-portrait urns uh, of each of us, and they're hollowed out so that the idea is that the collector would buy us now we'd get the money, we'd go to the Bahamas and have fun now, and after we croak, the collector, they would get the, the bronze urns immediately, and then they would get the art guys after we're gone. The ashes thereof. Yes, and the beauty of that is, is that, uh, is that a collector could own the artist. Yeah. It's like, it's like one thing, and well, I have. It's revolutionary. Here's my Andy Warhol here on my wall, but this collector could say, well, here are the archives. Here are the archives.